What's up, Vox and Hops heads? Here I am back with Vox and Hops episode number 23. Vox and Hops is all about in-depth conversations with metal musicians, industry folk, about their lives, about their music, about their business, and most importantly, about craft beer. Let's just jump straight into it this week. My beer of the week is not, I couldn't just pick one because uh, I had an intense and amazing beer experience last week. Last Friday, after my interview with Philip, which you're about to listen to, we both headed off to La Cuvée de Vire. La Cuvée de Vire, what is that? It is an amazing beer festival with great food, great beer, um, some great spirits, uh, some, some gins and some whiskeys. Uh, I cannot pick... One, the best beer of the week because I tasted so many great beers there. Uh, there was uh, exclusive stuff from Boreal. There was exclusive stuff from uh, Dieu du Ciel. I had just the, the best time, the best time. I discovered that there was a private importation beer company here in Montreal. Amongst others, I know that there's others, but I discovered this one. They had a booth set up there at La Cupé d'Ivoire and it's Agence Vitriol and I tasted a bunch of amazing Belgian beers. So much great stuff to taste. It was, a, it was an overwhelming beer experience. I'm definitely definitely going back next year and i would love to get some interviews done on site there because there's just too much great beer for everyone to taste and i'd love to share all of that with all of you vox and hops heads as for my pairing of the week philip during the interview you're about to listen to told me that he's been listening to this band called priest which uh, has some involvement with past members from the band ghost and it is not at all like ghost it is a pure electro synthwave pop late 80s early 90s dance vibe it, it's it's sort of very a very very strange album and uh, i didn't know about it and when Philip told me that he's been listening a lot to it while he's doing his paintings. I decided to give it a whirl when I got home later that night. And uh, it caught me. It's strange. It's, it's dancey, which is, which is odd for me to enjoy. But there's something, there's something there. The album's name is New Flesh. It came out in 2017. And uh, the beer which I would like to pair with it is from Malstrom. And uh, the, it's one of their new beers, which is called, in French, it's Les Cumes et et la Nuit Séduisante, which translates uh, roughly to English that uh, the foam is purple and the night is seductive. So what is this type of beer? It's also strange, weird combination of a beer. I don't know how they came up with this, but uh, all in all, it really works. It's a sour black lager to which they have added blackberries and Hascap berries, the Camarise. It's 4.8% alcohol, ABV. It uh, has an extremely, like, almost troubling color. It looks like a little bit like a, like an off Coca-Cola. It, uh, it, when you take your first sip, it starts off strange and malty, and then it just rolls straight into sour, and then right at the end again, there's just that little hint of the malt because it's a it's a black lager, so it's strange to drink a sour beer that's also a black lager. The beer has a lot of character. It's weird. The album New Flesh by Priest is strange. It's weird. There's a lot going on. I, uh, I find the two really go well together, so my pairing of the week is Priest's New Flesh and Malstrom's Sour Black Lager, which they added blackberries and hascap berries called Les Cumes et Mauve et la Nuit Séduisante. Today on the podcast, I had the chance last week to sit down with uh, Philip Ivanovich, who's an artist that lives in Montreal, and he does a lot of work for bands. He does works for Heavy MTL, the huge festival up here in Montreal. He does work uh, for video games. He's uh, an Uber beer enthusiast. He travels a lot, uh, so check all that up today. Fox and Hops, episode number 23. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. What's up, everybody? Matt here with Phil Ivanovich, the artist, the uh, mastermind with the pen. Um, we are at saint Buck. I was actually sitting at a <laughs> saint Sublon down the street, downtown Montreal on Saint-Denis Street, and Phil messaged me right before showing up saying, should we go to saint Buck?" And I was like, we're going to saint Buck because um, apart from Vice Versa, I would say saint Buck is probably the best tap house of Montreal, and you can't go wrong when you come here. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, how you've been doing, what have you been doing art artistically, beer-wise, uh, I met you basically from Facebook. 
and we weren't actually. I don't like. I like. I'm like a. I'm basically like a fly on the wall on Facebook, and I, I've added people, and I like watch, and I always saw like every beer <laughs> event that I was interested in. Philip is interested in. Yeah. Any a lot of concerts, and then I, we would go to like concerts, and I'd see you there. And I'm like, I know that guy. I know that guy. And then finally, we spoke together at uh, ZCL's 20th anniversary. Yep. And that's really like we hit it off, and I was like, I want to interview you. I want to interview you. So uh, here we are. You're you're like really in the scene. Uh, were, are you a musician? Have you ever played yep. in a band? I, I'm actually I, actually I was uh, in the Agony and Eden Pride in the nineties. Oh really? Okay. And I had another band uh, called Ultimatum. Okay. Uh, that people confuse with an other band that call that name because there's a bunch of bands that that are called Ultimatum. Uh, yeah. So I started with that band and. Um, after a while, I, I stopped because I, I wanted to go back to school and uh, study in the uh, graphic design and the 3D and stuff. So uh, I left the band, so I uh, started studying uh, 3D animation. I did some uh, stuff for computer uh, graphic. Uh, and then I started working in a little agency for uh, commercials and stuff. I did some uh, worked on movies. And now it's been 15 years I'm... Uh, at the Behavior Interactive, uh, which is a company who does uh, video games. And, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been the art director now for a year and a couple of months. Uh, and yeah, I'm working on this game called uh, Dead by Daylight. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. It's uh, horror, horror game. So it's uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm in in the place where I'm combining all what I love, like uh, video games, uh, art, uh, horror. And when I'm done working, I'm going uh, drinking some beer, some because uh, I have vice versa now uh, close to our place. So we moved. We moved last year, uh, last year or two years ago. Uh, we were downtown, but now we moved just across <laughs> vice versa. So it's a bit uh, dangerous for me because uh, <laughs> I really love. Uh, like you're saying, it's one of the best in the town with Saint Buck. And uh, yeah, uh, and beside that, I'm uh, doing a lot of freelance work for uh, bands. Um, festivals like the Evie Montreal. It's been five years now I'm working with uh, Evie Montreal, so uh, I'm pretty happy they're uh, uh, they're, tr they're trusting me, so I'm uh, for me it's a big uh, big thing to work on that. Um, and uh, yeah, basically doing uh, stuff for bands, shirts, covers. Um, and uh, right now I'm trying to find time to uh, do stuff for myself, like painting. I'm a, I paint in oil, oil really? painting, so yeah. uh, I really enjoy that. It's just uh, I don't have a studio anymore. <laughs> so uh, my studio is basically my uh, table uh, in my kitchen. So, uh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you got you to gotta use what you got. Yeah, it's just that the, uh, the smell is sometimes is not intense, but uh, it's giving headaches. So I, I need to find a space. So I, I, uh, <laughs> Say your loved ones. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's break all that down because you yeah. mentioned like yeah, a lot there's of a bunch, stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm uh, all over. That's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> um, let's talk. Start with beer. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lovely waitress just brought us our beers that we chose. Yeah, from it, brewery uh, from the states. It's the, the brewery is yeah. called Brewery. Yeah. And uh, it is a the nine ladies. Uh, oh, it's the um, the nine ladies dancing 2016. It's an American strong ale, uh, which is brewed with uh, cocoa, vanilla, vanilla co coffee, coffee, and lactose yeah. from the brewery. Yeah, 11.3 percent. Yeah, that's a good start. Let's see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> to me, to me, I I don't know about you there. When they serve me like these beers at the high, yeah, they need to be much warmer. warmer much yeah. warmer. It always sort of frustrates me, especially because it's like yeah. a huge tap. Yeah. I think the only one that does it proper, maybe there's another one, is uh, Barasari Harikana. Yeah. They they really have each yeah, of their yeah. taps at the proper yeah, temperature. Yeah, proper. Uh, but uh, that's why we uh, ordered before. So at the end, uh, the uh, interview, you can drink Ooh, some. Uh, it's really smooth. Yeah. Super boozy. And uh, as when it's gonna get warmer, you're gonna taste all the uh, more flavor. Yeah. yeah, caramel and malts and the color is like I was expecting it to be darker, but it's yeah. it's not a stout. It's a it's yeah. an ale, right? Yeah, yeah. strong ale. Yeah. So it's like a uh, it's almost like a like a reddish hue. Yeah, there's definitely a brownish some red reddish some brown, hue yeah. going on in there. Yeah, it smells sort of. It smells pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get better at my description of beer <laughs> descriptions of beers. It's all good. I think uh, to taste those beers, to grab like four mm. strong beer, and you get grab another one that is more smooth, and then those guys are getting warmer, and then you get all the, uh, <laughs> the flavors because those guys are. Um, 
Yeah, you need to drink them warmer. You're obviously a craft beer fanatic. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember your first experience with beer? Yeah. Uh, clearly. <laughs> uh, well, not clearly, because I was... Uh, well, my first experience was... <laughs> pretty funny i think uh, i was four years old and uh <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i was in serbia and my uh my dad was uh, having fun we're, everybody was having fun we we're in a party and uh he decided to give me some uh, slivovic which is the uh our uh, water I've, of choice <laughs> I've, i've heard the name <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have some old main ones so uh, uh we have a little f small portion of a not a field but a place where uh, the plums are growing and uh so we have a portion of our kind of plums family plums <laughs> um, and uh, yeah it's it's stronger when it's homemade because uh, it's almost reaching 50% sometime or oh boy and uh, yeah I was four and my dad decided to give some for me and some for the dog so apparently I was uh, running around the table <laughs> With the dog, and my mom was <laughs> my mom was pretty pissed, but my dad was laughing. But, so that was my first, I think, experience. But uh, then, uh, like I think all other bands, we started like drinking whatever was possible on the market. There was not much choices beside uh, Molson, like those. Because uh, you mentioned that you you're from Serbia. Yeah, but then I moved. The, you sorry. moved to. Yeah, sorry, I skipped some years. It's okay. Uh, when I was 16, I was. 17 i was in montreal so i uh when i was playing with bands we like most of the band we didn't have uh do unibrew yet so uh yeah my first experience we were in the jamming space and we were just drinking and playing and building walls of boxes and then i realized that all right this is fun but uh, i was looking for something in that beer and then unibrew came out and i'm like oh okay this is different and what 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 was what was it about it that it just you enjoyed better it was just more quality uh, the quality uh it felt like it was stronger <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh yeah it was pretty different i didn't feel like i was drinking something that was made in the ch on the chain like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i was feeling that there was some kind of crafting like it was the first one that i was really like the uh all those uh fans mon uh, mozit and all they ca all came along after that but uh yeah it was pretty good and then i was i started working in a belgium restaurant and so i had access to uh, some belgian beer i was like okay this is belgium hello <laughs> and uh, absolutely yeah, yeah they're yeah. totally inspired by yeah so yeah and from there uh Yeah, then I, I have to skip a lot of years. Then right now there's so many brewers. I'm going nuts sometime. I What is your favorite craft beer of the moment? Right now? Um, you can start with like a style or... Yeah, I well, obviously I love some uh, stronger, darker beer. Uh, I feel like it's almost like a art kind of approach because they're crafting, they're taking their time and they're building this intense, like we're drinking right now there's a lot of layers and uh it's like an experience yeah so right now see that that that's one of the the problem right now i'm i'm buying a lot of beer when i go to the states i import beer uh, there's a club where we import beer and i'm just stacking them so i can drink all my beers so, but right now my uh, beer of choice shelton there there's this uh barrel age they came out and Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the the imperial stout yeah. aged in a bourbon yeah. cask for I, six months. Yeah. Delicious. I have two left. Uh, I think this is what I like right now in Montreal. There's there's some sours that I like. I'm not a big sour fan. Like um, I went to a festival and there was like almost half of the beer were sour. I was like a bit okay. Uh, not half. I'm like I love like ten ten sort of sour on i don't know 100 beers like right now it was like half of the beer were sour i'm like okay uh, sometime it's a bit too much for me and it's, uh, it's the new rage it's, yeah it's uh yeah in the states right now it's it's really the new sour rage, yeah. and, and some uh, some moment was the uh uh the ipa so the hazy ipa yeah, hazy ipa the brood ipa made a brief appearance yeah it's not finished yet yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so many beers that I, it's, it's like, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying like the, um, the selection we have now, it's, it's a bit crazy. It's almost like music. There's so many bands, so many stuff you want to try, but it's, I'm going a bit 
crazy. I, I don't know if it's the same for you, like, but I'll. There's like a, be- a beer that I loved in the past, yeah. which is uh, Le Castel's yeah. Yakima, Yakima IPA. Yeah. It's a very strong, very good IPA. But now, as my palate has evolved and gotten used to all the New England style IPAs, yeah. when I go back to it and I drink it, you feel it's I don't normal. like it as much. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. missing this extra. Yeah. yeah, the creaminess or the yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how it's uh, evolving. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it good for the scene that there's so much of it, do you think? Um, I don't want to limit people's creativity. Yeah, yeah, I, know. But, uh, uh, I think it's great. Uh, I think people are more into trying stuff. Like I see people posting beer, they're drinking a beer, and they're like, okay, people are more open to the, uh, uh, the I guess, the uh, crazy number of different beer. Uh But is it good or bad? I think it's... I don't know. It's. I think it's like a special thing, like you said about music, like that uh, first time you listen to a new record yeah. from a band you like. So this brewery puts out this new beer mm-hmm. in the style that you like, and you like see the hype for it, yeah, and then yeah. you finally find it. Yeah. I remember when I found the first Boreal de Nogues, yeah. there was so much hype befo- I know. behind it there. When I actually like found it and yeah. could buy it, I was like like a child at Christmas, excited, which is an exper- uh, you know, a feeling that I don't get very often. Yeah, it's it's great, and now it's it's easy easier to find it because when it came out I was like okay I, I can't get it because I'm at work it was like a ghost yeah. yeah yeah and I think that's uh, maybe that's one of the maybe the the uh, problem I'm seeing maybe people are just focusing what's coming out mm-hmm. and they see a lot of advertising around it so people are tend to just drink that and there's so many other good product that they're I don't know going around of the good one and maybe just focusing on people uh, say uh, uh, like publishing some image oh this one you guys this is a new thing and people are just gravitating it, yeah. towards it yeah. same thing for uh, untap I, I won't go in there but uh, I don't have untap because I don't have untapped I'm too uh, I'm too obsessive yeah I know so I'm trying to remember I take photos but uh, untap is just I think it's cool but uh, some people are not living it's almost like Filming a show in a exactly. concert, exactly. you don't feel the experience, yeah. and you, yeah. I do the same thing with my kids. There's like moments that I'm like, I should take a picture of this, and I'm like, no, wait, never mind. I'm just gonna like look at this and remember this moment because it's a good moment. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with beers. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a connection with everything. <laughs> well, for me, <laughs> uh, when someone tells you that they don't like beer, yeah, and. Uh, You know, they want to drink a beer with you because they know you're a beer guy. Yeah. Or they come to like a microbrew with you. Yeah. What is a beer or the style of beer that you suggest for them to try? Usually I try IPA, but it's it's easier now. <laughs> but before it was a bit harder to get to let somebody uh, go into the, that zone because it's pretty uh, different from the other beer. Uh, but uh, it's a good question. <laughs> That's the thing. I think people are... Uh, Usually they're uh, s- sticking to one style, like for blonde. They're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm, do you have something a blonde? And they're okay. Well, you can try other stuff, but they're not. I, I'm not saying they're not ready, but they don't want to venture too much because they're. I don't know. They're maybe they're scared. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, they're comfortable. Yeah. But um, that's one of the first thing I, w- I I did a long time ago. I was just wanted to try all different. And there's stuff that I like more. There's like Pilsner is not my go-to beer, but I could drinking if there's nothing but when touring Europe yeah <laughs> we get served we get given a lot of pilsners so yeah I'm used to them but I have friends who are, who are fans of pilsner and I'm not judging them because I know that I can't force anybody to like what I'm drinking and yeah. the Vox Populi yeah. Czech pilsner yeah is v- very very good and it's okay. true to the style it's it's absolutely delicious so. right, shout out to it Vox out. Populi I really 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 like yeah uh, they're good doing yeah. a, a good job with uh, the milkshake and all the... Uh, Anything that's brewed uh, in, from what I've experienced there underneath a schlag yeah. is very, very solid. I don't know how that works. I'd love to like interview one of them. How, like, because a schlag brews yeah, for yeah. a bunch of people, but everyone brews independently at a schlag, or do they have a say? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I wanted to visit a schlag because it's pretty close to my place, but uh, I don't know how they're managing mm-hmm. the entire thing. But I know they're doing a lot of... They're, uh, I think they're, uh, they're pretty cool because they're exploring 
every time they're coming out with a beer, especially their beer, it's always like, holy crap, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. they're mixed? And then you try it and say, oh, it's different. And it's yeah. You have to try La Fresh if you yeah. haven't. It's a sour beer, yeah. and um, that's a sour beer that I really like. You travel a lot for beer. You go to beer. Metal and Beer Fest. Metal and Beer yeah. Fest. Two of them, right? Uh, yeah, I went last year, uh, well, December, I went to the uh, Los Angeles one. That was the first one I did in Los Angeles. And I went to both uh, Philadelphia one, and this year I'm going back to Philly. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fun. It's like you pay for your show, but you're um, basically if you add a bit more on your ticket, you're uh, you're granted the access to all the beer. Uh, all Holy you can drink, so fuck! Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of good brewers, and that's that's what I I um, the other thing is like when I talk about. Uh, drink, uh, going to the States for beers, people are thinking like, oh, I'm going to drink some Budweiser and stuff. And <laughs> some trying to tell them that that thing changed. Like for the last 20 years, that it's showing on the map. It's crazy how many brewers and good ones there are in the States. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, I'm trying to combine uh, beer, visiting and seeing shows and uh, Getting away from work a bit and uh, relax. What was your favorite festival, beer fest? Um, yeah, last year we we did uh, me and my girlfriend. We did the um, Mickler Fest in uh, Boston, and the day after was the Beers Meet Wood in Portland. Oh shit! Uh, that was pretty brutal. Um, the I think Beers Beer Meet Woods was pretty crazy because. Uh, those guys just brought their like I was saying like it's it's a craftsmanship like it's they're they're bringing their best not painting but beer it's their art and they want you to try it and they're when you talk to them they're so passionate that when you drink the beer like okay that's exactly what you described to me like it's it's crazy I think uh, that festival is pretty awesome it's uh, like all the hours that you put into like an artwork all the hours that they put <laughs> into a beer yeah all the hours that a band puts into yeah. an album yeah and then they go out in there and they share it with the world yeah yeah, I, I, yeah that, that's where I feel the connection I think it's all it's different but it's all kind of related because it's a uh, it's product that the when you're doing music you're proud of it uh, same thing for the beer there they feel like they're really proud and there's one guy who was like okay we in that beer we have the best pumpkin in the world and he I don't remember the place where he took the pumpkin and we tried it and I was like, okay, I never had a pumpkin that, ale that, that amazing. And it was, I don't know, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I, and we were pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good yeah. day. I'm jealous. No. Uh, when did you start like drawing and painting? Uh, I started pretty young. Uh, as a kid, I was just drawing for fun. And then I, I went to my uh, friend's place and uh, that's actually where I started um loving metal oh, I went, yeah yeah it's uh my friend's brother was drawing uh, Eddie from Iron Maiden and that time was uh, I think it was Seven Sun I think yeah and then I was like okay this is I don't know what it is but that's what I want to do <laughs> I want to do cover artwork for yeah, bands artworks or just how, drawing how old were you when that happened uh, I think I was mm, 10 9 I don't wow. know 9 10 yeah Uh, and then, I don't know, time passed by. I, I was at school and uh, I wanted to go to art and nobody was pushing me. So I was like, you know what? Maybe that that's not what I need to do in life. And then I started pushing. I wanted to be a his history teacher. And then I was like, I tried. I studied for three years. And then I was like, eh, you know what? It's I saw uh, one of my teacher working in a music store. I was like, uh, <laughs> this is a sign. <laughs> yeah, this is a sign or something. Then I wanted to uh, go in music school. And then the day before my uh, exam, I said, well, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. And then I saw computer graphic. Uh, you could mix computer with uh, drawing. So I started to get more and more interested. And then, yeah, I started to draw more. Uh, I was drawing on my side, so I, I had some bad habit in my drawing, so I had to take some step back. And Do you think that actually exists, that there's bad habits? Because so, I hear people say this when you're like learning guitar or when you're, yeah. you, you develop bad habits. Does yeah. that happen in drawing too? Yeah, yeah, it happens in drawing when you, uh, especially when you, uh, you start drawing, you start blocking stuff. It's like everything. You put the bass mm -hmm. and then you 
cover up with the details then you go into the small details and usually i was just drawing and going straight to the details okay, so okay. that's the uh the most uh common mistake people are doing and then i start to take more time and putting more time in my uh, the basics like the shades the uh uh the lining the shadows and then i started to understand more what I needed to do, because the the biggest time you're spending, it's in the uh, process of the sketching. And if your sketch is all wrong, well, it's going to end all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's it's same thing for whatever. Like you're building a house, you have to... You need a strong foundation. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's basically it, yeah. Who were some artists that inspired you early on? Uh, well, uh, Dan Seagrave. <laughs> yeah. Dan Seagrave was one of my... Uh, um, especially in covers, uh, cover album like Entomb and all. When I started listening to these bands, I was like, "Holy crap!" And Gorgots, like all those covers, I'm like, "That's crazy." And the funny thing is, I did two uh, ex- uh, expo with Dan Seagrave, and I was so nervous to talk to him, and he was such a cool guy. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the biggest name I can. There's so many artists, but. Uh, in terms of metal and covers, Dan Seagrave was one of my favorite. And uh, Nick Rollard also did all the dissection albums. Yeah, 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 yeah. When did you realize that you could start doing this for a living, for real? Or let's let's take it back a step. What what is one of the first album art covers that you did for a band, and how did that come about? Uh, one of the first one. Well, the one first one that I, it was when a bigger band was actually Cryptopsy. <laughs> See, I, I, knew, I felt like you know, this is how well I know my own yeah. band's history. <laughs> is, it, is it Once Was Not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I fucking love that, that, that right. cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I started to uh, be more... Uh, I realized that, okay, maybe I can do more of this artwork. And the problem was I was working and going to school, so it was... I couldn't do that like freelance at home i tried it but it was a bit too hard because people even today people think i'm sitting on a chair and just doing that all day but i, I actually work during the day and you, you, I, you, I need work. A, you need a muse yeah <laughs> so i actually work outside of work um, i know i don't have to do it but it, for me it's a passion and uh and i think it's it's uh i don't live from my artwork but i I want to push it to a level where I can be proud or the band are proud and uh, I don't know, take it to a certain quality level or I don't how, know. how was the experience of working with Cryptopsy were they were they cohesive and all on one path with uh, their visual idea of yeah, what they wanted uh, Yeah Flo had this uh, vision there was a lot of elements so uh <laughs> We had to uh, step back and try to figure out how we could put everything <laughs> in one uh, image. But yeah, it was pretty cool. I think uh, uh, it was going well. I, I didn't see any uh, hiccup or... Uh, <laughs> I'm just Whoa. teasing because cause, uh, <laughs> n- nowadays there's a lot of people driving the train when we're talking to artists. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be... Uh, Political? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, give me a, like a short list of bands that you have worked with. Uh, I work with, uh, well, you guys, uh, Origin. Um, I did poster with uh, for Enslaved. Uh, I did poster for a show with uh, Misery Index. Um, there's a lot of local band, obviously, like uh, Canceric. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a long list. There's um, I have all the covers in your <laughs> mind. You just see it that way. Yeah, yeah there's uh, sorry. How do you prepare yourself mentally when you approach making an album artwork? Have you like heard the CD? Have they given you ideas? Uh, y- usually the uh, I picture yeah. you like playing it in the background and you're just like painting in your <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I I, I I did once I was working on one of the cover and I started with a painting and uh, at some point I had to switch to digital because it was too long for me to. He was asking me to move. Oh yeah, the yeah, flames yeah. a bit a hinge. So I was like, okay, dude, I'm uh, I'm gonna finish it in Photoshop and. I think it was the end result was good, but uh, yeah, it's um, if somebody asks me to do a painting, it needs to they, they need to put trust in me, and I do it till the end, and they see it. Sure, I can make some changes, but they uh, 
it's a bit hard for me to go back in the painting and oh, okay but like well, where do you draw your inspiration is it from the band or is oh it yeah yeah usually it's from the band they're uh usually they're they have an idea or uh they're just telling me okay uh i want a skull i want okay <laughs> i want bro uh, like apocalyptic kind of vision that's one of the team that comes back a lot uh but we're so original <laughs> <laughs> yeah usually uh, I, I i i love when the band is uh sending me some track file and so i can get inspired by the lyrics the um the music mm -hmm. uh so i can put more intention in the uh, color and uh, shapes and uh yeah uh. it's funny i used to say color and uh, chris and ollie when they hear music i don't i don't have this gift i don't i think they have like a different part of their brain that works when they hear music they see colors different shades of colors the music gives them that i don't know if it's a different like artistic side of their brain yeah, that yeah. i don't have there because like we had a we're going on tour coming up with a board in there and yeah, we have yeah. a light guy on the store for the first time he's like send me your set list and shout out to Niels. i know you're listening and uh what colors you would want and i was like i don't know just Red. don't make it pink you know <laughs> yeah, pink. and i told ollie and he was like oh but, uh, you know for cold hate warm blood so i yeah. like blue and it's gonna yeah. be blue and <laughs> I was like, okay, you. I'm gonna put you in touch with Niels, and you guys hook that up. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's cool. It's uh, uh, definitely some uh, riffs are tending to bring some more intense color. Mm -hmm. I guess some part that are a bit maybe slower or a bit colder. Maybe the lyrics also. There's, I think there's a lot of connection that can be made. I think everybody's interpretation of color is different too. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's, that's something true. That like that, that what you actually see is red, and what I see is red is probably actually <laughs> could be different, but it's yeah. both. Red Red, you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get involved with the creation of the heavy mtl posters oh uh it's actually um uh, uh, a friend of mine who's uh working at uh, image folie he uh i was just asking for fun it's like hey uh you know those designs is this, do they take some new artists and like and then he's like i don't know and then he asked them and there's like hey you know what you j just send some sketches and sent some sketches and they they were pretty hyped with what I've done uh, funny enough the uh, one of the first sketch I sent was the uh, four horsemen yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. that year I didn't even know and Metallica was on the bill so I was like <laughs> oh we like that one too perfect yeah, yeah so I was like okay and then I realized that Metallica was there I, I, then I was pretty happy and uh, I think they like what I'm doing because I'm I have a different approach from other artists or well you're metal is you're not like yeah you know some artists are just dudes and then they can draw but they don't actually live it and feel it and breathe yeah. it yeah but i that's the thing i yeah I, I do a lot of metal stuff but i don't mind doing non-metal stuff i'm open to everything but yeah that's it's a your niche yeah. <laughs> yeah um that means that you because you designed the posters you know the lineup before the public does yeah <laughs> what goes into that do they make you sign a clause uh, is it a trust thing uh, uh before uh, i had to sign some uh, papers and this here uh, they didn't show me anything but uh, I was <laughs> I was at the uh, Evenco office and by accident the, the uh, image popped in <laughs> I was like oh okay and then she looked at me oh sorry I, I won't tell anything I, 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 uh, I'm a good I think keeper of secret because <laughs> I, I, I there's so much um, uh, PR and marketing going around. I don't want to screw things up. You don't want to pull a Slayer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. That uh, that day was pretty uh, hectic. Uh, I wrote to them and they were like running around. But then I, like you said in the uh, in the other interview, they turning in the. It's very positive. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go to Heavy MTL yeah, every yeah, year? Yeah, uh, every year I I went. I think every year I went. And uh, what band are you stoked for this year? Well, Slayer. There. I, I I thought like the two last time it was their. Uh, last shows and every time I was like okay I'm just gonna go and every time they were just I don't know there's this energy that kept on building up every show so I'm pretty excited for this year I'm pretty sure they're gonna be even more crazy it's gonna be huge there's yeah. gonna be so many people there yeah. uh, there's a bunch of band that, uh, I, I have to check the list I don't it doesn't matter yeah. Yeah. There, there's clutch I didn't see for a while so uh, I know the uh, last time they came was years and years ago uh, can I say ghost? <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. ghost. Yeah, I, I, I think the um, the old thing around the band kind of not 
Not that I was less interested, but I was like, come on, guys, I, I just want to hear music. I don't want to. And this old thing, this buzz, I, I, I don't know. There was something about it, but I, I'm still curious to see them live. I missed the last show, but. Uh, me, me as well. I was right after a tour, and after a tour, I go home and hibernate. <laughs> but um, I normally don't like bands with hype. It normally bothers me, and it just turns me right off. Yeah. But Ghost, for some reason, I've just accepted that I like them, and. <laughs> I'm not going to think anymore. Maybe it's age that's yeah. happening and I just don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there's a big thing around that band. People are like... If, if more off. young kids are listening yeah. to metal music and seeing satanic imagery, yeah. you know, it's a good thing for the future yeah, it is, <laughs> of it metal is, at least. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, definitely there's a lot of bands. And if there's a band that I'm not too familiar, I'm going to check it out. And if not, I'm going to chat with some friends because, I don't know, the festival is so, is, is so well organized. That It's I, awesome. Yeah. There's no uh, down moment. There's always something to do. And, and, and if not, you can just go to a little beer garden. Yeah. The, the, the beer, the garden. Yeah. beer garden there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're treating me uh, well. So I, I, uh, I think... The, the respect and conf confidence they give me, I, I just, I don't know, I feel it. And then when I go to the festival, I'm like, I'm proud of being part of this process or whatever. That's cool. I had yeah. no idea that you, you you were the one doing it all. Yeah. No, not all, but I'm doing a bunch of them. Yeah. Now, this year, I did the poster. I'm going to do other stuff too, coming. Some t-shirt designs. I don't yeah. know. We'll <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite year of Heavy MTL that you remember, if you had to pick one? Well, just with Emperor last year, I... I I almost cried, and that band, I, I, I was about to go to Norway just to see them. Cause really? Because Inferno Fest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I I, <laughs> I missed them once in 90, uh, 97, 99, I don't remember. Uh, and I was working. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're going to come back. Same thing with uh, Death, <laughs> the band. <laughs> oh. And that's two of my biggest rewards. <laughs> that's why you go to every concert now. <laughs> yeah, I you don't never know. You yeah. never know. Yeah, I, um, but yeah, Emperor uh, when they played and the the rain it's started crazy. raining and then crazy. like, is that intent? Well, is that a coincidence? I don't think so. And it started. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. Yeah, it was definitely one of the top sets yeah. of the whole fest for sure. Uh, there's so many shows that I like. Uh, Fate No More. I, I it was fun. Uh, uh, I know people are. Sometimes bitching against Slipknot, but their show was pretty crazy. Uh, so same, same, same argument. If it gets kids listening to heavy metal, <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Five yeah. Finger Death Punch, same thing. Whatever. <laughs> as long as kids start listening yeah. to screaming music, yeah. we need more influence and uh, more new fuel into yeah, the metal yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I remember when Slipknot came out with their first album. I was like, holy crap, uh, this is this is different. I didn't know if I liked it or whatever, but then I started just listening to it. I'm like, okay, this is crazy, and I just saw their uh, live performance. The first time I've seen, I saw them was with uh, they were opening for Cold Chamber, Cold Chamber, and the Machine. I was there. Yeah, I was afraid of them. Yeah. <laughs> See, that show was nuts. Like, yeah, yeah. I had like just gotten the CD the week oh. before. <laughs> yeah, my like friend Vince um, from high school, who was like the music curator of our generation. <laughs> in my high school got this CD and yep. we all started listening to Slipknot we had only seen like the booklet yeah. and then we go to the show I was afraid when they walked out on stage yeah yeah, it was it was pretty intense uh, especially Slipknot like uh, Machine I liked it at the beginning with the um, when he started the band in 94 and then I don't know they were touring the Burning Red on yeah. that so that's that's their unspoken <laughs> yeah. king so <laughs> yeah. you know if I gotta say so the, that topic is coming uh, quite often right the unspoken every king every interview right? yeah do you want to talk about it or no? not now <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier that Unibrew was the first beer that you started appreciating more yeah. because of the quality of it. Yeah. Do you think that there was something about the artwork of it that yeah. also drew you towards it? Yeah, uh, totally. Uh, the trois pistoles, the, the, um, the, sorry, the horse. The label, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the horse, the, um, the canoe from the Serge Gallery, all those um, f uh, stories from that was connected to the Quebec uh, Quebec stories, uh, I think, was just awesome. It was a good, um, a good uh, image for uh, breweries from the our province. Mm -hmm. it was and smart, yeah. 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 And the, the the I think the world just saw it as a, okay. There's something going on there, and it's visually interesting too. Yeah. Versus a fifty. 
on a green and white label. You know what yeah. I mean? Or, uh, yeah, you're yeah. more inspired to drink a beer with uh, <laughs> <laughs> some cool. It just, yeah. It's like nowadays when I go buy craft beer, I see yeah, it's, some yeah. some labels inspire me. Have you ever wanted to? Design a craft beer label or yeah, been approached to? Yeah, it's uh, it's funny to talk about it. I uh, actually I was doing one for um, a Brewers that my uh, friend was working at, and it didn't go. But uh, uh, now I'm actually checking with some uh, Brewers in the states, like Three really? Floyd's. The, the oh, shirt, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're one of the best. Yeah, they're they're pretty crazy. They're uh, brewing a lot of. Uh, Band beers band too, beers, like uh, Amherst, Hops and Half, uh, Amber, Amber Smash, Smash Ale. Ale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, their Dark Lord are is crazy. I know there's like a lineup or something, yeah. like a special Dark Lord Day or yeah. something. Yeah, it's a 16 point something, and that's the uh, drawing on my uh, hoodie. Actually, okay. Okay. Uh, that beer is just crazy. It's I've like, heard. I, I have to try it. It's, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and there's some places uh, in my, outside of Montreal. I'm checking, uh, but definitely, I, I really want to get into that uh, that market yeah, yeah. it's uh, I love doing band stuff but I want to do other stuff that are related with beer <laughs> yes and, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah that's uh, uh, what would be the best piece of advice that you would like to pass on to an aspiring metal themed artist you can be inspired by pieces but not copying the exactly. I'm seeing so much. I've seen my artwork used in Indonesia and stuff. Oh so, yeah, yeah. And at some point, I'm like, okay, well, I, what do you want to do? You can sue them or whatever. Uh, yeah, I think it's also um, knowing some basic uh, drawings, like drawing skills. Uh, Photoshop is fun, but it's uh, it's easy to get uh, lost in filters and special effects I think also simplicity sometimes is better than complexity I know there's a lot of band wants some complex stuff but uh, simplicity I think it sometimes wins over a so, uh, message you want to tr- uh, transcend in the image if we're just talking about metal covers I think that's it I think there's uh, a lot of inspiration right now there's so many uh, great bands, great uh, artists. It's uh, a good side question. What is your favorite uh, cover artwork that you've seen recently? I have one in mind. Recently? Yeah, I, li- I really like the Bell Witch's new album oh, yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah. That's, that album cover yeah. is insane. Yeah. Yeah, but that's uh, old painter uh the um keep on forgetting his name doesn't matter yeah well yeah it's it's great yeah uh, it's, i think it's going well the, the music it's pretty heavy doomy perfect uh, match yeah yeah, yeah this, this is pretty crazy i yeah i love those uh uh crazy storytelling image i can uh, covers that i tend to like less is uh all those crazy uh, dismembering uh Woman, man, or kids. It's been I, done. Yeah. 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 And some, I refuse some of the... Uh, the offers? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to be uh, linked to those kind of... It's good, uh, it's good to hold values yeah. to your art. Yeah. yeah. And right. standards to what you want to re- represent you. Yeah. yeah. What is your band or favorite album, if you can pick one, of the moment? Favorite band right now? Yeah. Old, new... <laughs> It doesn't matter. Um, the thing you're listening to the most. Uh, I'm actually listening to a lot of uh, electronic, and uh, sometimes I need to work uh, without. You know, you're listening to music and you don't want lyrics. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I, I, I like I love synthwave. I love I love priests. The uh, the uh, other member from Ghost. Oh, see, I don't know that. Yeah, it's it's really different. <laughs> it's really '90s, and people are. Uh, I don't think. So if I understand, it's it's the members of Ghost. Uh, it's one one or two guys and that left yeah. after Papa yeah. fired everyone, yeah, yeah. and they started a new project <laughs> called Priest. Yeah, one of the project. There's a couple of projects. Oh, cool. But, uh, see, I haven't I haven't dug deep enough in yeah. that. Yeah. And there's, I, I think there's a lot of nostalgia. I, I feel really nostalgic when I'm listening to uh, music, so I, I try to find stuff that resonates right for you. Yeah. And Priest is kind of connecting to synthwave, electronic, uh, but yeah, in death metal, there's a lot, there's a bunch. Like there's uh, uh, Eight Eternal. The uh, there's some crazy stuff out there uh, Psychrotic uh, the new one uh, shout out to the Haley's <laughs> um, 
Yeah, the new uh, Cryptops also is pretty cool. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the end spoken king. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's nice. It's, uh, I think there's uh, some elements you guys brought back and it's pretty... Uh, there's a certain rage <laughs> uh, and uh, I think it's hitting hard uh, last show was pretty cool too uh, at the, uh, with Barf I think yes 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 yeah. oh, I didn't even cross you there you guys were busy so I, uh, yeah I always make time <laughs> for you Phil <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring something back, uh, popular request, yeah. uh, popular demand. Uh, at the beginning of the podcast, the first few podcasts, I played the game with my guests that I play with my wife when I drink beer. And it's, if this beer was a person, person, who would it be? So once again, it's the nine ladies dancing from 2016 from the brewery. I have something in mind. Person? Yeah, if you had a, a friend or just no, a. It could person. be a, a made up person or. <laughs> I just have a, beer, a bear in my. A bear? <laughs> yeah, a big okay. bear. Like a crazy bear. He's been through some shit. <laughs> Someone took his honey. <laughs> He's really pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a specific person, but yeah. I imagine like an old dude that's fed up of being shit on his whole life. Shit on his whole life. Yeah. And uh, he's just going to stand up for himself now and hire nine ladies oh, to dance for him. Yeah, if we're talking about the names, yeah. It's yeah. delicious. It's uh, As it's warmed up, it's uh, you can really taste more of the, the, the smoothness of the lactose and the... Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Almost creamy. <laughs> delicious. Well, thank you, Philip, for coming, drinking beer with me. Our night is not over. I meant to bring it up much earlier, but we're headed to La Cuvée, yep. which is a, a huge beer festival. Yeah. So not only beer, there's spirits, too, I think, but it's yeah, all from there's Quebec. A, I think there's whiskeys, there's uh, food, there's uh, yeah. gin. there's. And uh, we were supposed to do the podcast there, but... Uh, Things changed, and we came to St. Buck. I'm not disappointed. Always fun talking to you. Yep. Our conversation's not over, but it is over for all of you listening. No. So uh, have a good one, and uh, we'll Cheers. see you next time. Cheers. What's up, boys and girls? Thank you so much for listening right to the end of the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, my conversation with Philip as much as I enjoyed having it. It uh, was uh, It's always interesting to, to meet people for the first time during the podcasts. We sort of knew each other, but we didn't know each other at depth. And uh, I, even just listening to the podcast and editing it, I could feel how much we just really hit it off. And the rest of the night at La Cuvée du Vire, we just had such a great time. So, so a big shout out and a big thanks to Philip and all of you guys uh, should check out uh, his his uh, artwork page. He's he's very interesting. I love all of his. He does this October ink challenge to himself where he puts out artwork every day, which is just painted with black ink on paper. It's 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 super interesting every year. I love following it. Check out all of his artwork, which he has up on www.flatbathtub.com. Uh, I just came back from a jam with Cryptopsy. Uh, we're getting in shape, back in shape uh, for the upcoming run alongside Aborted, Benighted, Hideous Divinity, which is coming up in the States. It's the Hell Over North America, the Blast Beat Party. We had a good first jam. We're getting all the rust and the kinks out. I will, you guys need to grab your tickets for this. It's going to be a sick, 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 sick run. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back uh, on the road again and uh, meeting all you people. Uh, if you're a fan of the podcast and you want to you know, come and say hi to me and uh, have a conversation about beer. Please, please do not be shy. Come see me. I'll be at the merch table. Come say hi. I've been doing a, a bunch of interviews this week. I had a really busy, busy interview week. I did a total of four interviews this week. It's uh, been fun. I'm, it's nice talking with people and drinking great beer with them. Coming up on the podcast next week, I will have uh, JF Michaud who works for Eventco. Eventco is the biggest booking and promotion company here in Montreal. They put on over 500 gigs a year, he told me. They're involved uh, from rock to pop, and they are directly involved and curate the Heavy MTL Festival. So check out our conversation next week where we talk about how we got into booking, uh, what goes into creating a huge festival such as Heavy MTL, and uh, what his favorite lineup is, what his least favorite lineup, all that and more next week, Vox and Hops, episode number 24 with J.F. Michaud. Just want to take the time to thank all of you for listening. I really appreciate each and every one of you. 
Without your help, without all your support, without your kind messages, your suggestions, there would be no podcast. I sincerely appreciate you. If you have any suggestions that you want to send directly to me, some comments, some beers that you'd like me to drink, some people that you would like me to invite onto the podcast, just give me a shout out at matt at voxandhops.com. Some M-A-T-T at V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S dot com. So I hope you guys have a great week. Spend time with your families. Spend time with your loved ones. Spend time with your friends. And most importantly, drink great craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hop says. See you next week. Oh,